Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode where we're doing another first page critique. Yay! <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for submitting. Keep on submitting. We intend to do more of these. We love getting to not just read your pages, but also, you know, hopefully help out with the process and brainstorm and shine some light into what editing and reviewing looks like. So first off, my name is Molly. I'm Morgan. And I'm Teresa. And we get to do fantasy today, right? And I, we're all huge Ooh. fans of fantasy. This is amazing. Fantastic fantasy. There we go. <laughs> All right, should we jump? Oh, uh, Morgan, you explained it so well last time. What method do we use here for those of us new to our we, style? We use the even better method. So our belief is that every manuscript can be even a little stronger than it already is. And so we talk about strengths that are already existing. It's only a first page, but what the strengths that we see, we make some predictions about what the promises that the first page sets up. And then our critiques are, it might be even better if, and you don't have to take our critiques or even agree with us, but we believe in the power of dialogue. And so please, in the comments below, add your own helpful critiques or even better if ideas so that we can do everything we can to help this author bring their idea to life with the kind of vivaciousness and excitement that it deserves. Good word. And as always, authors, we keep everything anonymous. If you want to self-identify, that's lovely. That's great. We welcome it, but we keep you anonymous. Uh, for this one, our story is called, uh, the author said it's called Echoes of the Melody. Love it. Echoes of the Melody. Clink. The penny pinged off the balcony's glass door. Its sharp note, a solitary beacon disrupting the night's stillness. Keegan surveyed the building from the sidewalk, but no silhouettes stirred behind the apartment's rows of darkened windows. While the structure's architecture was inoffensive, he loathed how its boxy shape and drab brick and timber exterior blended into the surrounding suburban sprawl, indistinguishable from countless incidental compl complexes. Its soulless uniformity served as a precise metaphor for the monotony of his life. Layered porches displayed homely touches, potted plants, bicycles, soot-stained barbecues, offering glimpses into the residents' lives. Keegan pitched another penny, aiming for a particular second-story balcony in an act of rebellion against the predictable pattern ruling his days. The coin glinted beneath an insect swarm light, chimed against the glass door, and skittered across the wooden deck. A moment of introspection followed as the penny settled into a grooved crack. Keegan wondered if by finally seeking the truth of his origins, he would only confirm a foundation of lies. On the balcony, a woman's silhouette finally emerged, or sorry, a woman's silhouette emerged behind the railing shaking shadow pattern backlit by the chro chromatic flicker of a TV screen. She tossed her long, dark ponytail over one shoulder and leaned out, peering into the night. Lit by the tired, amber glow of a streetlight, he gazed up to meet her inquisitive eyes, noting their distinct almond shape and warm brown hue as she spotted him below. He offered her a slight wave. It's late, she whispered, accompanied by the distant wail of an ambulance siren. He strained a grin. Alina, wild seeing you here. Come here often? The attempted levity rang hollow to his ears, but he hoped she didn't notice. Alina laughed, amused. What are you doing? She crossed her arms, head tilted playfully. Wow. This is really good. A lot of imagery. Well-written imagery, and it flows nicely. Yeah. I like the idea that the title is um, I could, the idea of echo, and then the very first word is a clink. And so I felt like that tied in, and it made me trust the author instantly. And I really liked that, because then I felt like, oh, I trust you, and I'm, I'm ready to be carried away by, like, sentence one. 
And I thought that was really impressive. Yeah, I have liked, I really liked the opening because one challenge, and I feel like this author is very good at writing uh, images and description. Um, and you really can tell. One challenge I've noticed authors have with that is beginning with action. Because you really do want, you want to begin with action. You want um, your imagery to draw readers in quickly and to promise something's going to happen. You're not just listing the setting. And the clink starts with action. And then you can easily kind of go into that beautiful description. So well, well done. Fantastic. Yes. On, on things we love, because we always always start with things we really love. Um, a beautiful description, like, like they're saying, but in a particular way, and I noticed it because I got to, to speak it, there is a certain lyricism to what they've written here. Um, using the you know, um, what is it? Alliteration. Alliteration. Thank you. Not illusion. Alliteration. Um, it is very interesting sounding like the way, you know, the penny pinged, you know, uh, the silhouette stirred surrounding suburban sprawl. Like there were things that were like interesting, just the way they sounded, the way that you crafted you, the author, the way that the author crafted the the sentences at the very lowest level it is quite beautiful mm -hmm. what do you mean by lowest level oh low is not meaning bad at the very um basic level like um like in terms of the word choice the grammar like the how the structure of each sentence fits like every i can tell that this author paid a lot of ten attention at the very like sentence level sentence level and even lower than the sentence level the word choice level the like mm -hmm. that level yeah so well i loved the figurative imagery and i thought it was amazing i was completely in and then we got to this line of well the structures inoffensiveness um that prepositional phrase for me felt a little off beat from the rest of it because the next lines are so powerful about the metaphor of the monotony and how it's reflecting the characters. And I don't really know who's taking offense or who's not taking offense. And also I don't think it's needed. And so as far as crafting the opening scene, for me personally, that little propositional phrase was the only section in the writing that felt out of step with the beauty and poetic flow of the rest of the, the writing. That's interesting because I the one word I didn't like, I didn't like, or one phrase I didn't like, I did not like countless incidental complexes. Um, and I think because that was just so hard and Molly stumbled over it. And even when I was saying it, I was like, oh, that's hard to say. Well, an incidental is interesting because we're trying to get people to buy in. So subconsciously, if you say something's incidental, then it's not important Then why am I reading it? And so if the complexes reflect his life and his life is, are we to mean that his life is incidental? Good questions. Ooh, that's a good catch question for the author. And if so, what's to keep me reading that? Like, why do I care? And by the way, I do care. I love your writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, like, the, I'm picking apart that little tiny section because everything else truly is i'm really interested in the penny and, and the girl with the ponytail and i'm really invested um in the birth story yeah yeah some of these phrases are fantastic backlit by the chromatic fil fl flicker of the tv screen oh my gosh mm. beautiful beautiful as as morgan said beautiful showing mm -hmm. yeah I, I think for me my even better ifs I, I kind of have two. Um, one is at the at the line level. So there is this. Um, you have these two back to back lines here. I'll, I'll highlight in them on the screen. But um, each each of these two lines end in just a way that that felt awkward for me. So it's it's soulless uniformity served as a precise metaphor for the monotony of his own life. Okay. 
And then the next sentence is layered porches displayed homely touches, potted plants, bicycles, soot stained barbecues, offering glimpses into their residents' lives. And mm. I wasn't sure if it was intentional parallelism or just like um, a rep or if it was accidental repetitiveness of the way that you're ending each of the sentences. Um, so that's a very, very like small, like I just, I just wasn't sure. Very small thing. Um, for me at a, at a more developmental level, at a higher level, I really, really love what you're doing with so much of this. For me personally, like, like Teresa talked about um, starting with action. Um, I like to think of it slightly different. I like to, I think on the first page, your character should make some sort of decision. We should get some sort of feeling about who your character is. And I don't feel like I know who Keegan is. I, Keegan doesn't make any decision, doesn't face any conflict, doesn't have any stakes or have, you know, there's a beautiful, beautiful description and we know Keegan's flipping a penny. Um, we get some, a little bit into Keegan because like he doesn't like the, the boxy shape. Um, it's, it's unclear for me at this point if it's Keegan, like um, you have this sign, line about soulless uniformity served as a precise meta metaphor for the monotony of his own life. And because at this point in time, I'm not sure if that's Keegan thinking that thought or if there's like a narrator like saying that thought. So I don't know if Keegan is self-aware of his monotonous life and if he's angry at it or not, which would be a lovely detail to know. Um, so that I love the writing. I love the imagery you're painting. I'm loving the picture that you're setting up. But for me personally, at this moment, don't feel connected to the character yet. And I'm going to push back. And I disagree. And that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> People like, are different. That's fine. I disagree. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, Go so, ahead. yeah, we'll jump in together, Teresa. I think that I'm very drawn in by this character. I think he is breaking the monotony by doing the penny. I think it's establishing his normal life which is not going out at night. It makes me think he's never done this penny before. Um, this, why are you doing this at night? The familiarity, I was really tricked by that because I thought it was going to be this birth mother that he never met or something. And then it was this girl who knew him and seemed to have intimacy with him. And then I was like, okay, wait, how does this link with this? Which makes me want to turn the next page because I feel like he's pushing some kind of envelope. And now I've got to see how this other character fits in to the story. So I feel strongly the other way. Sure. Yeah, I do too. And I was like, is he trying to get her attention? Why? What what's what's he mean to her? Why why was she why did she come out and is like, hey, it's you and not be like, what the heck are you doing? Stop dropping pennies on my porch, you dumbass. Um <laughs> <laughs> so I for me it was a lot I had a lot of questions. Um and I definitely would turn the page. I did have one thing though that I wanted to say that I and I, again, there's not very much to this. Um, so I don't know if this pattern continues, but the last line, Alina laughed amused. What are you doing? She crossed her arm head, her, she crossed her arms head tilted playfully. That's to me, too many actions. And I <laughs> would, be, I would. You know what it is. I, Go, you finished, but you know what, I know what it is. I would be worried that that pattern continues throughout. So if this is a one-time only thing, totally fine. But um, I see a lot of writers that are very good descriptive writers who put too many actions amid, amid, amid dialogue. And to me, this is a touch of a, a little like, mm. So what I think it is, I, I agree, the line throws me off. Um, but the reason I think it throws me off is because this whole section is very showing, showing. That's a tell. Head yeah. tilted playfully yeah. is a telling line. Yeah. Um, right? Like how do how does someone tilt their head? Like you can say they they tilt head tilted kind of thing, or like she relaxed against it, but but you're telling in this line, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is a bit juxtaposed when there's so much showing. Yeah. And to me, I would get more out of she smiled up at him, her head tilted. I thought he was below her. 
I don't know. Anyways. All right. Any other, oh, by the ways? Thank you so much for submitting. I think this is a beautiful, oh, beautiful story. But I'm so impressed with your ability to wordsmith. You definitely have a gift for writing. And thank you so much for sharing. Hopefully, you'll get some good comments in uh, below. And if you want more uh, feedback or interested, please join us on our Discord, where we have the greatest writing family on the planet. And we just have so much fun there. And if this is published or close to published or something like that, please let us know where people can read more. Um, if you have other stories that you've published, drop them in the comments. Let people know so they can buy your stuff. Yeah. And if you want your story first page read, there's a link in the description where you can submit your first pages. All right. I think that's it. We'll see you around. Thank Bye. you.